They say there is a fine line between our two strongest emotions, love and hate. On one end of the spectrum, there is love so strong that someone is willing to give their life for the one they love. Isn't that what they call immortal love? On the other hand, there is the person who will do anything in their power to satisfy their burning hatred for another, to the point of harming himself. Excessive, isn't it? Nevertheless, most married couples go back and forth in their marriage between the two, but not to that extreme 99% of the time. However, we cross the line in times of stress, and especially if it is followed by an argument. I can attest to this now. For me, it's called going to the dark side. My name is Steve Moore, and I'm the business manager for Atlas Plastics. I turned 32 last month, and I've been married to the love of my life, Kay, for eight and a half years. We have two sons, Danny, who is six, and Kenny, who is seven, and we live in a big house in a suburb of Atlanta. We have a shit ton of buddies who live in the same neighborhood, and we spend most weekends going to someone's house for a party or barbecue. Where we lived when we first got married, I had a bunch of friends, but Kay didn't like most of them. They weren't as sophisticated as our current ones, and they didn't care what kind of car you drove or how big your house was. They were a tight-knit group that liked to have fun, but had your back if you needed it. When Kay made the decision that we needed to move, as she put it, to a nicer place, we had our first big fight. Our house was only 15 minutes from where we both worked, and our house payments were fairly low. I'm what you might call a laid-back kind of guy, and I care less about the finer things in life. Unlike my wife, who was always looking for something better. So when Kay said we had to move, I fussed for about a week and then thought, what the hell? You see, most things really aren't worth arguing about. A car, a house, clothes, they're just material things that ultimately don't mean life. So when Kay persisted, I just let her decide. It just wasn't worth the energy to argue with her about it. You can call me a wuss, but I can count on the fingers of one hand how many fights Kay and I have had in the last eight years. That was until last night. Kay works at an interior design studio owned by one of our neighbors. She works from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. so she can take the kids to school in the morning and be home when they get off the bus. I, on the other hand, work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Depending on traffic, I usually get home around 5.45. Where we used to live, I was home and had a drink in my hand by 5.15. Tuesday night, there was an accident in the driveway, and I got home at almost 6.15. I was a little tense when I got to my driveway, but figured what the heck. At least I'm finally home and can relax with my wife. I snuck out the back door and went upstairs to change into shorts and an old T-shirt. I was coming down the stairs to the kitchen when I heard Kay talking on the phone. Don't worry, Laura, you know Steve. He'll agree with everything I say, I heard Kay say to her sister. No, he won't get mad, and I think I know my husband a little better than you do. I've thought this through, and I plan to talk to him tonight after dinner. Yeah, I'll call you and let you know what he says. Well, I gotta go, girl. I gotta finish dinner. I'll talk to you later, Kay said and hung up. What do we need to talk about? I asked, turning the corner. Steve, you scared me. Kay said as I came into view. Let me ask you again, what do we need to talk about that should wait until after dinner? I asked, taking a beer out of the fridge and sitting down at the kitchen table. Let's wait until after dinner when the boys go upstairs. Okay. What did they do this time? I talked to them about the cart and not hitting golf balls in the backyard. What else could they have done since Saturday night? It's not about the boys. It's about us. Well, I haven't done anything wrong since I grabbed your ass at Frank's Grill last Friday night, and the only reason I did was because you looked so hot in those new jeans. What did you buy this time? I asked, trying to add some levity to our conversation. That's not what I'm talking about. It's all about how we treat each other, she began. Well, baby, you know I love you, and I know you love me. So what's the problem? Yes, Steve, you know I love you, she said holding my hands in hers. But I'm not sure I still love you. What? I don't understand, Kay. I told her I don't like where this conversation is going. 
If you have something to say, say it. You're the best and most caring husband in the world and a wonderful father, she said, touching my cheek. But I'm just not sure I feel the same way about you as I did when we got married, Kay said with a concerned look on her face. I'm thinking about a trial separation to figure out how I feel. Kay, I don't understand. When the hell did all this happen? Before or after we kissed goodbye this morning, I said, now more than concerned about where she was going with this. The transition from love to hate had begun after all. I'd been thinking about it for a while, but I didn't want to say anything until I was sure what I wanted. I don't understand. Where do you want to go? I asked. Well, I'm thinking of having you move in with your mother for a while. Ever since your father died, she's been bouncing around this big house by herself. Maybe she needs some company for a while? Kay said as if she was talking to a small child. Now I was starting to get angry, but I kept it to myself. How are you going to pay for the house and everything else if I leave? I asked, knowing full well what would follow. As you can see, I'm now approaching the dark side. Well, you'll still have to pay, but it won't be forever just until I get a chance to work something out, she said in her most loving and caring voice. I stood up. No. What do you mean, no? Kay asked in surprise. Kay, what the fuck don't you understand? No, I'm not moving in with my mom. And no, I'm not leaving my house and my two sons. If you need to leave and tie your head and ass together, do it. I don't want you here either if you don't love me anymore, as you eloquently put it. So since I'm such a great fucking guy, I'll even help you get ready, I said, slamming my beard down on the table and walking up the stairs to our bedroom. Kay was shocked to the core when I came downstairs with an armful of clothes from her closet. Put these in the car and I'll be down with the next load in a minute, I said as I threw them on the living room couch and jogged up the stairs. As I came down with the next handful, Kay started yelling for me to stop. I thought you wanted a separation. I'm just helping you move your stuff out, that's all, I told her in a calm voice. At this point, I crossed the line of love and went to hate in my feelings for her, or as I now like to call it, the dark side. I want you to leave, she shouted at me. That's not going to happen, Kay. This is my home, and I haven't done anything to you or the kids to make you kick me out. Now, if you want to go down to the basement... I can put your stuff down there, I told her, throwing my second arm full of clothes on top of the others. This wasn't going at all the way Kay had planned. Steve should have tucked tail and left without saying a word, she said to herself. He shouldn't have made a fuss, and now what the hell am I supposed to do? Let's talk about this like two adults, Steve. Kay, I think you've said enough. At least now I know how you really feel about me. So make up your mind. Where do you want to put your clothes? Because you're definitely not staying in my bedroom anymore, I said, trying my best to stay calm. When our sons Danny and Kenny came through the door, they wanted to know what was going on. Mom had just moved some of her stuff, that's all. How about we go get some hamburgers and let her finish up? I didn't have to ask twice. We left and came back 45 minutes later with food. However, we came back to a few extra people, two police officers. The evening's officers. What can I do for you? I asked, getting out of the car and telling my sons to go inside. We got a call about a domestic dispute and we need to talk to you, the big guy said to me without taking his hand off his gun. Looking at his hand, I said, Officer, you won't need this, and explained why I had come home. I didn't raise my voice. I didn't threaten her or my children, but I told her I wasn't leaving the house. My names are on the mortgage, I pay all the bills, and unless there is a court order, which I highly doubt, I think I have every right to be here. I told my wife that if she wasn't happy with me, she could move out and I would even help her pack. They both chuckled and enjoyed my dilemma. Kay became irate, to say the least, when the police officers told her there was nothing they could do. However, they said they would file a report that I was calm and not a danger to my family or myself. But Kay ranted, raved, and used profanity while talking to them about her husband. 
Finally, all I wanted to do was help my wife load her personal belongings into the car. That was all they witnessed. I thanked them, shook their hands, and they wished me luck. Kay was pissed off that she didn't get her way. Steve, why don't you just leave and make things easier for all of us? She shouted at me. Like I said, Kay, that's not gonna happen. So decide where you want to put your stuff in the car or in the basement. It's your choice. The guys and I are going to eat on deck, so think carefully about what you're going to do next, I said, grabbing my food and heading to the deck where my guys were waiting for me. What happened to Mom? Who knows, maybe she had a bad day at work. Guys, let's give her some space. You know, Mom, she'll be back to her old self soon, I told my boys, not believing a word of it myself. We ate and then watched a special on the X Games that were being held in Atlanta. Why don't you guys go upstairs? I told them. I'll be up later to check on you guys. They went upstairs, and I went looking for Kay. She was gone, leaving her clothes on the couch where I had left them. I went upstairs and noticed a few drawers pulled out and her two suitcases were missing. Well, I guess that answers that. I said as I sat on the bed, wondering what was going to happen next. Heck, I had left a loving wife and family at 7.15 a.m., and now at 9 p.m., I had two sons but no more loving wife. Sometimes life really sucks. Mom, I need a big favor, I said as I called my mom. I laid out my story to her and asked if she would stop by to see that the boys got off to school on time and were here when they got home. Maybe Kay's hormones were just running wild. She'll probably come back once she realizes what an ass she's made of herself, but I'll be there in the morning just to make sure. I thanked my mom, but said I wasn't as sure as she was. I was right. Kay didn't come back on Wednesday or Thursday. She called the boys Thursday afternoon to say hi to them, but not to me. I guess I was still an asshole. By Saturday morning, I was concerned, but also angry. You have no one to blame but yourself. I said, starting to beat myself up. If you hadn't been such a milky toast all these years, Kay would never have tried to kick you out of your own house. Now she's sulking at her parents and telling everyone what an insensitive cunt I was when I didn't consider her feelings. To hell with her and the damn house, I said, looking around. I never wanted it, and it's too big for the four of us. Laura, Kay's sister, did come over Sunday afternoon to pick up some things for her. Hi, Laura, I said hello to her at the door. I figured she'd send you out to get some new clothes. You know, Kay, it's all about her. She still can't understand why you didn't just give her the house and the kids and move out, she said with a smile. I told her you wouldn't agree, but she said she knew you better than I did. I guess she was wrong. I should have kicked her ass a long time ago, but I figured I'd keep the peace in the family by not saying anything. Any idea when she's coming back? I have no idea. She's still in the poor, poor, poor stage. But mom is ready to kick her out if she doesn't pull herself together. But you know, daddy, his little girl can do no wrong. You want to stay for dinner? We got grilled chicken, baked potatoes, and corn on the cob. Let me pack her things and we'll make arrangements, she said with a smile. The boys were happy to see Laura and we all had a nice dinner together. She got two text messages from Kay asking where the hell she was, but she never replied. We got everything cleaned up and it was about eight o'clock when she said she better get going. Thanks for stopping by. It was nice to see a friendly face for a change. If you need anything, give me a call. I told my sister that she is ruining a good marriage, but all her friends are telling her to stand her ground and that you will come around soon. I told her that's not gonna happen, am I right? Absolutely. But you'd better go before you get into more trouble than you are now. Laura hugged me tightly, kissed me on the cheek, and walked out the door. Married the wrong sister, I said to myself. The next three weeks were hard. Mom took care of the kids, and although Kay called the boys, she refused to talk to me. She did, however, send me two long emails about how bad she felt, that I wasn't supporting her and a whole bunch of other nonsense. The only thing that surprised me was that I was no longer invited to the neighborhood parties, but Kay was. I guess they had already taken sides. The kids were the first to notice it and kept asking when mom was coming home. I'm not sure, guys. 
It's really up to her. I'm not holding her back. She's doing it on her own. I told them. Saturday morning as we went grocery shopping, my life began to change. I was walking down the aisle with my two sons when someone grabbed me from behind and lifted me off the floor. You're such a whipped pussy. You're probably stroking her shorts right now, too, came a voice from the past to taunt me. If this is as high as you can get me, you're still out of shape. You piece of shit you've always been. What Carol saw in you, I'll never know, I laughed. I thought you'd disappeared off the face of the earth. Are you too good for us now that you have such a big house? Randy asked. I've always been too good for you. You just never realized it, I said, hugging him. It's good to see you guys. See you guys later, Randy said, walking back to the island. Was that Uncle Randy? My boys asked, wide-eyed. Yes, it was Uncle Randy, and we better hurry up. I don't want to be late for this party. We got to Randy's just after 4.30. Carol came out and gave me a big hug, and her girls grabbed my boys and headed to the backyard. Where's Kay? Carol asked. That's a whole other story, I said. Well, I'm glad you and the boys made it. Everyone will be glad to see you, Carol told me. They were. Our friends treated us as if we had never left. The kids and I had a great time. At the end of the evening, when everyone had left, Randy and I sat down. They wanted to know what had happened between Kay and me. All I could do was shake my head and tell them I had no idea. We never fought. Hell, we never argued, I told them. Maybe that was the problem. I let her do whatever she wanted to do to keep peace in the family. Hell, I was getting as much sex as I wanted, and I thought Kay was happy. Who knows? Carol said it's probably just a woman thing but I told her I think it's much deeper than that. You don't tell your husband you love him, but you are in love with him. It's all just empty talk. It never occurred to me that Kay might be fooling around, but I wouldn't bet on it now. I'll keep my eyes open and my mouth shut and watch it all play out. There is no more Mr. Nice Guy. From now on, my kids come first, me second, and to hell with everyone else, especially my fair weather neighborhood friends. Every week on Sundays, Laura came over to pick up new clothes for Kay. She always stayed for dinner, and I caught myself looking forward to her visits. Saturday morning, I dropped my boys off at Kay's mother's house and hoped to talk to her. But after the first explosion, I was relieved to just drop them off and walk away. That way, there would be no more confrontations on the front lawn. I went from anger to almost giving up before I finally got depressed. Hell, I felt like a goddamn alcoholic going through a seven-step program. I even tried to get answers from Kay by sending her weekly emails, telling her how much I loved her and missed her, but I was having no luck. Steve, please be patient, my love, she wrote. I just want to resolve these pesky issues so they don't come up later. I know this has been hard on you and the boys, but just be patient a little longer, she wrote. At least that gave me hope. Three long months later, while I was washing Sunday dishes, Laura shot me in the chest. Kay went on a date last night, and it wasn't the first time, she said without looking at me. I told her she was crazy, but she went anyway. I think you should know, she said, avoiding my gaze. I didn't say anything. I just stood there with the soapy rag in my hands as it dripped onto the floor. Didn't you hear what I said? Laura asked, looking at me. She went on a damn date. Say something, damn it, she yelled at me. I was too stunned or shocked to say anything or even move. For the first time since Kay left, I thought about my life without her. Sure, I'd gotten angry and yelled and raved a few times, but I always thought she'd come back and we'd be happy again. Now, for the first time, I thought that might not happen. Hey, Steve, are you alive? Didn't you hear what I just said? Laura repeated, tapping my chest now. Wake up from that. Your goddamn wife is out there fucking somewhere, and all you can do is just stand there. I grabbed her arms and then hugged her. My eyes filled with tears when I heard Laura start to cry. This isn't fair. You're such a good guy, and all she's doing is using you. It's not right, she said as she hugged me. No, it wasn't right. And I finally snapped, throwing the rag against the wall. Holy shit, 
I yelled as the kids came into the room to find out what all the yelling was about. Dad, what's going on? Aunt Laura slipped on the floor and banged her knee. That's all, I explained to my boys. Remember, we still have a movie to watch and we're waiting for you, they said as they walked back into the living room. Laura and I were sitting on the couch and my boys were sitting right in front of the projection TV. I had seen Spider-Man three twice, and they had seen it at least six times while we all watched in silence. I'm sorry, Laura whispered, holding my hand. I was in a daze on the dark side. Mentally, I was planning my next move. Not revenge yet, but an instinct for self-preservation. After the movie, I put the kids to bed and walked Laura to the door. Are you okay? She asked me. No, but I'll live. Call me if you need anything or just want to talk, she said, kissing me on the cheek. You know she's an idiot, Laura said as she walked out the door. Call me. On Monday, I took a vacation. I took the kids to school and then sat down at the computer. We had two Visa credit cards with outstanding balances. I paid off both of them and closed the accounts. Then I went to the bank and transferred 50% of what we had left to a new account in my name only. They told me it would take six business days to remove my name from the existing accounts. I called the HR department where I worked and took K off my life insurance policy, 401K medical and dental insurance. I changed the locks on the house myself, including changing the security codes on the front door and garage door opener. Going to the mall, I canceled my cell phone plan, which cost me an extra dollar 250, and started a new plan in my name only. Wait until Kay tries to use her cell phone, that should cheer her up, I said with a smile, the first smile that crossed my lips in a long time. I left the home phone number the same, but left a message on the answering machine that Kay should call her parents' home phone number. The kids ran into the house as usual. Guys, I need your old house keys. I changed the locks, and here are your new ones, I said, handing each of them a new key, and took the old ones and threw them in the trash. It's done, I said to myself. And it only took eight hours to go from happy husband to single parent. I knew it was only a matter of time before it exploded. That evening, the house phone rang, and I told the guys to put the receiver on the answering machine. What the hell are you doing, Stephen Moore? My cell phone isn't working and neither are my credit cards. I need you to call me right now and tell me why you're being so shitty. Kay only called me Steven when she was really angry. It only took me eight hours to push her to the brink and over three months to lose her. Laura called and said she was on her way. Grab the kids, because we were all going out to dinner. She stopped, ran to the door, and told us all to get our butts in order. What's the rush? I asked. Kay and my parents are going to come over and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you, so if you don't want to hear that crap, come with me. We ended up at Sonny's Barbecue. The food was good, and we all had a good time. You know I changed the locks, right? That's what I figured when I heard you canceled her credit cards, cell phone, and insurance. She told my parents that you cleaned out all the accounts and savings, and that's when my dad got mad. I took exactly half but only after I paid off all the credit cards she'd used in the last three months. That girl sure knows how to spend. That's what I thought, but you know Daddy. Lord and protector of his little girls, even when they're wrong, Laura told me. What are you going to do now? She asked. Nothing, I answered. Nothing? Nothing but put that monstrous house on the market. I've hated that house from day one, and even if we do eventually get back together, I want that house gone. You know you can't sell this house without her consent. I know, but when the for sale sign comes up, we'll be the talk of the neighborhood, I told her, grinning from ear to ear. We were gone for almost three hours. The kids needed to go to bed, so we finally headed home. Are you and mom getting a divorce? The kids asked when I put them to bed that night. We asked mom and she said no, but she doesn't live here anymore. Kids. I can't say yes or no right now. You know your mom and I love you very much. But I don't think she wants to live with me anymore. So we'll just have to wait and see what she wants. I kissed them both goodnight and told them I loved them and everything would be okay. 
I grabbed a bottle of beer and held one out to Laura as we sat down at the kitchen table. You know you can't hide forever, don't you? And I'm not going to. She knows where I live and work, so it shouldn't be hard for her to find me. Thursday at work, Kay burst into my office. How dare you cancel my credit cards and cell phone, she began. And when did you change the locks on the house? Hi, Kay, you look good. How are you doing? I'm fine, and the boys really miss you not living with us. Yeah, I've lost a few pounds, thanks for noticing. I just kept chatting to an amazed Kay. Steve, what the hell are you talking about? She finally asked. Just answering all the questions you should be asking after we haven't seen each other for almost four months, that's all. Now if you want, you can sit down and talk. But if you yell and scream, I'm going to have to ask you to leave because, after all, this is a business office. Okay, Kay said, taking a seat in front of my desk. Why did you do all this last week? Why did you start dating? Aren't we married or am I missing something? I asked. It was just dinner with a friend, that's all. Did you sleep with him? No, I didn't sleep with him. It was just dinner, I told you. Are you going to sleep with him? I asked. Steve, why are you asking me all these questions? I just want to know what my schedule is. What's your schedule? Kay asked. The reason for the divorce, I said to a shocked Kay. I don't want a divorce, damn it! Kay shouted back at me. Well, that's just the way you act. Dating, ignoring your husband and kids, buying new underwear for someone other than me. All signs that you're moving on without us. Kay, they still send credit card bills to the house, so I know what you're buying, just not clear who it's for. I told you I don't want a divorce. All I need is some time to myself, that's all. She told me for about the tenth time, but this time I didn't let her off the hook. How much time, Kay? How much more time do you need? I asked. I don't know. How can I answer when I don't know? She replied. Well, when you find out, Please let me know, but it better be soon if you want to try and save this marriage, I said as I stood up. So I still have work to do, and I have a meeting in twenty minutes. She tried to kiss me goodbye, but I turned away. She wasn't happy at all, but she didn't say anything. Laura, do you want to go to the party Saturday night? I asked. Sure, where? Just meet us at the house at six o'clock and dress casually, I told her. Randy and the band were planning a huge adults-only party, and I didn't want to go alone again. We were one of the last ones to get there. I thought you said 6.30, I asked Randy. Hank and Ted arrived at 5.30 and turned on the smoker while the girls made potato salad and baked beans. Before I knew it, everyone was packed, and by 6 o'clock the party was in full swing. So don't blame me. I introduced everyone to Laura and shouted, Let's get this party started, opening a beer for each of us before Carol and the other girls dragged Laura away. Who's the chick? Randy asked. Kay's little sister. Nice. Is she good in bed? Are you crazy? She's my goddamn sister-in-law. How should I know? One of these days, Randy, you're really going to have to pull your head out of your ass. The party was just like old times. Beer was flowing and the women were talking and complaining about their men. Every now and then I looked over to see how Laura was doing. She looked like she was really enjoying the socializing. After dinner, the doubles games began. First there were 20 questions, 10 for the guys and 10 for the women. The person who answered a question incorrectly had to take a swig of beer. It doesn't sound like much, but by the end of the night, many of us were in the shit. These questions were things you should know about each other. Birthdays, weight, eye color, where we first met mother's maiden name, etc. I was shocked when Laura got nine pluses from my three pluses. She probably knew me better than I thought she did. Next up was passing items between pairs. The big ones were pretty easy, but when we got to the spoon and shot glass, I failed miserably. Through body contact, I got to know Laura and her strong body much better. I discovered that she was much more nimble than I was. I continued to fail and had to take sip after sip of beer. Like I said, by the end of the night, I was feeling no more pain. Let me help you put him in the car, Randy said to Laura. I hadn't seen him this drunk in a long time. But I think he needed it tonight. 
Do you want me to walk you home and help you put him to bed? No, that won't be necessary, but thanks for asking. He has a guest room downstairs, and if I can't get him upstairs, I'll just leave him there, Laura said as she headed towards my house. I wasn't going to wake up at 3.45 in the morning, but my bladder had other ideas. I guess you can't drink a gallon or two of beer without paying the piper. As I sat up and swung my legs off the bed, my head was throbbing. Heck, it hurt to even blink. I stumbled over my nightstand, the edge of the bed, and the bathroom door jam before I made it to the bathroom. I was about to pull down my shorts before I realized I wasn't wearing them. While I stood there swaying, I decided to do it sitting down. Two quarts later, still half drunk, I waddled to the bed. I climbed back into bed and walked over to my wife. She was naked too. I breathed in the scent of her hair before kissing her naked shoulder and neck. I started to drift off as I rubbed against her. I was starting to get more than a little horny. There's no way she wants to fool around at a time like this, I thought to myself. Heck, even when I woke her up to kiss her, sometimes she'd get mad at me. Still with my eyes still closed, I felt her pushing into me until I was completely submerged. For the next ten minutes, we both stroked in complete silence. Our breathing quickened, our heartbeats quickened as we got closer before we finally went over the top. There were no screams or huge thrusts, just gentle caresses. Holding her in my arms, I kissed the back of her neck as she softly told me to go back to sleep. We didn't move a muscle as we both dozed off, and I was inside her. Even with my eyes squeezed tightly shut, I could see the light coming through the windows. My head hurt, and my mouth tasted like someone had peed in it when I started coming back from the dead. I tried to remember how I got home, but everything was a blur as I pulled her a little closer. I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be back in a second, she said, jumped up and ran naked into the bathroom. Even half asleep, I could hear her brushing her teeth and rinsing her mouth. She didn't gently jump back on our bed at all. If you expect any action this morning, head to the bathroom and do something about that breath. I can smell mine on your face, she said with a laugh. Okay. I was a little drunk, very tired, and my brain probably wasn't firing on all eight cylinders. But when I heard her laugh, something clicked. It wasn't Kay. We broke up and she hasn't been home in over four months, I said to myself sitting up and looking straight into Laura's eyes. Like I said, if you need something, you better hurry up. Remember, you told mom we'd pick up the kids after lunch, so go, she said, kicking me out of bed. As I brushed my teeth and washed my face, I glanced over at Laura, who was sitting naked on the bed with her knees pulled up and her arms wrapped around them. I pinched myself once and looked in the mirror to make sure this wasn't some crazy dream. How, when, why? I went through all the words, trying to figure out how this happened. Well, when I brought you home, you were pretty drunk. I finally got you into the house, and as we started up the stairs, you slipped, grabbed me, and we both rolled down the stairs. You thought it was really funny and started laughing, which made me laugh. You pushed me, I pushed you back, and then we started wrestling on the mat. You kissed me out of the blue, and then you started chasing me all over the house. I kissed you? Well, it wasn't exactly a kiss, Laura said. So you chased me upstairs and into your bedroom. I told you to undress before you went to bed, and you said that if you were undressing, so was I. I figured, what the hell, I'll undress you, put you to bed and sneak out when you fall asleep. So you made a deal with me. A couple minutes later, you were in your underwear, and I thought you were the kind of guy who liked boxers, Laura interjected. So, I had to nudge her to keep going. Well, like I said, you went down to your shorts and just took them off and threw them on the pile of clothes. Well, I took off my panties and told you to get in bed. You climbed into bed and threw back the sheets. Damn it, I thought you'd pass out in a couple minutes, and in your condition, I'm safe. I guess I was wrong. Well, one thing led to another, and we almost made it. What do you mean we almost made it? I asked. Well, Steve, you basically came to me with kisses, tongues, and a million fingers. 
Laura said with a wide smile on her face. I never knew you were such a pervert and that you had no inhibitions. Kay never shared that fact with me. Why didn't you stop me? I asked. Your family, for crying out loud. Steve, Kay has been dating behind your back for at least a month, and I figured you deserved a little payback. Besides, I've always had a crush on you and wanted to see how good you were in bed, and I wasn't disappointed. Are you saying we did it at night? I wish. You were pretty drunk and almost... Why didn't you get up and leave after that? Hell, I'd never remember what we did last night. I thought about it, but I was tired, so I figured you'd sleep till noon. How the hell did I know you'd need seconds at four o'clock in the morning? We can't. Kay's your sister, I tried to say. But my pleas were not heeded. She pounced on me. Yes, this is my sister, the one I know and once loved, Laura said, kissing me on the lips. Now get your ass up. We still have to shower and get the kids. The shower took us a very long time. We kept soaping each other's intimate places, but after half an hour, the hot water started to get cold and we had to stop our fun. At breakfast, when we were both sober, I realized that I had to make a frank decision with her. Laura, I don't think it would be wise to continue this. After all, I'm married and Kay is your sister. I simply mentioned the obvious. Look, Steve, I'll stay in the shadows and no one can know. And besides, how long are you going to keep up this marriage charade? This weekend, I replied. If Kay's not back by Saturday morning, I'm going to see a lawyer, I told Laura. I'm not going to say anything to the kids because my mom plans to pick them up out of town on Friday after school. So at least I'll have an answer by this weekend. Laura seemed more than a little disappointed with my answers. We picked up the kids and we all went home to make dinner. It was a quiet night between Laura and I before she announced she had to leave. I walked her to the car and held her for a moment before she got into the car. I leaned over and gave her a kiss and she drove off. That night my letter to Kay was short and to the point. Unless you are 100% back and ready to be my wife and mother to our children, I am calling it quits. Time has run out. It's time to make a decision. On Tuesday night, Kay called to say she was coming back. She said she left on Friday and that we would have all night to talk. I was elated, but regretful at the same time. The week dragged on. Kay called me every day, and so did Laura. Laura said that Kay was very happy to be home and that she wished us both the best. When I got home Friday night, Kay was already waiting for me with a glass in her hand. I grabbed her and kissed her and it felt so strange after four months. We ate, we talked, then we talked some more. We both knew what was coming next. It was like we were both avoiding what came next. I was waiting for her in bed when she came out of the bedroom completely naked. Damn, she was beautiful and I wanted her terribly. I made love to her tenderly as we had done for the past eight years and she just had me in return. Kay, you didn't make love to me tonight, I said to my wide-eyed wife. I don't know who you were thinking of, but certainly not me. And Kay, after eight years, I know your body as well as I know mine. How long has this affair been going on and please don't insult my intelligence by saying it just happened? Six months, Kay said without looking me in the eye. But it's over. I broke up with him a long time ago, she said with a horrified expression on her face. In other words, the real reason you left was to be with him? Is that true? It started out that way, so I needed to be alone to decide who I wanted. So you've been sleeping with him all these months, and now you expect to come back into my life like nothing happened? Like I should just say, it's okay, honey, I'm just glad you're back. Bullshit. Steve, did you fool around with anyone else while I was gone? Kay asked. What does that have to do with the case? We're talking about the fact that you've had a lover for the last six months. I just want to know how much of a prude you really are. Well, Kay, I did once. But unlike you, I was drunk and didn't find out until the next morning, I said, getting out of bed. Now that I know what kind of lying whore I'm married to, I can make the hard decisions I've been putting off all these months. Steve, I'm back with you. It's over. I made a huge mistake and I admit it. 
I'm not proud of what I did, but I'm asking you to give me another chance. I love you, and I'm begging you to give me another chance to make our family whole again. Please. What the hell was I supposed to say in response? No? I need to think about it, Kay, but I can't sleep next to you. Right now I'm fucking pissed off. Just tell me it wasn't one of our friends or someone I work with, I asked. It was someone I met through work, and it's over, she said for the second time. Friday and Saturday, I slept in the guest room. It was lonely, but I had some tough decisions to make going forward. We talked all weekend. She told me to ask her any questions, and she would answer them truthfully. I didn't want to know any details, but I asked why. At first, it was exciting, and I felt like a naughty girl, a teenager hiding something from her parents. He paid more attention to me in one week than you have in the last two years. I just fell under his spell, but it didn't last long. After a while, the novelty wore off, and we just fucked because it felt good physically. We both decided it wasn't worth it, and neither of us wanted our spouses to find out. So it's a short relationship. I realized I had made a mistake, and I wanted you back. By Sunday morning, my mind was too full of problems, and I needed a break. Dinner at her mother's house was something she had missed all these months. She put on a huge blanket and everyone seemed to be in a good mood except her mom, Laura, and me. When we got up to leave, her mom hugged me, put something in my pocket, and whispered for me to call her tomorrow. The next two weeks were restless. I still slept in the spare room, and the kids were happy to have their mom back with them. Friday afternoon, I left home to take care of some things I couldn't do after work or at night. I turned my cell phone off because I didn't want to be disturbed, and when I turned it back on, there were twelve messages from Kay. I pulled out my beer and was halfway through it when she flew through the door, waving an envelope. What the hell is this, Steve? She shouted at me. What does it look like, Kay? Why did you serve me? I thought we were going to try again, she shouted at me. We were almost together, Kay, but it was just the two of us then, I said. Now there's no hope for the three of us, I said to a shocked Kay as she sat back in her chair. You see, I was leaning towards your side because of the kids and all the good times we had in the past, but two weeks ago something new came up that put our marriage on hold, I told her. How did you find out? No one knew she replied. Does it matter how I found out, Kay? So you were just going to play me off like some stupid sucker and make me believe it was mine. You really are a piece of shit. You know that, Kay? It shouldn't have happened. I'm so sorry, Steve. I don't love him, just you. We'll take care of this and then we'll go back to the way things were, she pleaded. He gave me enough money to take care of it so his wife won't find out either. With every word that flew from her lips, she was digging a deeper hole. I hope you three will be very happy. I love you, Steve, I really do. We can get through this, and if you want, we can sell this house and buy another and start over somewhere else. Kay, we're done. Hell, we've been broken up for a long time. I just didn't want to accept it. For the kid's sake, you can stay here until the house sells, or you find another place to live. I plan to take the kids with me but you can see them whenever you want. I don't want anything from you except for you to get out of my life, I said. She cried the rest of the weekend, and when I picked up the kids, we had a long heart-to-heart -heart talk. It wasn't a big surprise to them that we'd broken up, but they weren't happy about it. After all, it was their mother. We split everything equally, and after all our bills were paid, I had enough money left over to buy a small house in a friendlier neighborhood, Kay had really taken care of her problem, and I respected her desire not to say a word to anyone. There was one more problem left. You see, Kay's mom slipped something into my jacket pocket that Sunday that changed everything. I called her the next day to check on what she'd given me. I shouldn't be telling you this, but if I don't, you'll never know the truth, she began. I found something in the guest bathroom the morning after Kay moved out, and it took me a few days to work up the courage to give it to you. She found a pregnancy test in the trash, and it showed that someone had put a bun in the oven, so to speak. Since she was the only woman in the house, and it definitely wasn't her, it could only be Kay. 
I didn't want to be the one to tell you this, but I thought Kay would try to pull a fast one on you. Come to think of it, you didn't find out from me, did you? Got it, Mom. I hate to say this, Steve, but I love her very much. Don't be a stranger, she said as she hung up. That's how I found out Kay was pregnant. It probably would have been better if I had found a test kit, or seen the doctor's report, or followed her to some sleazy motel and peered in the windows. In the end, it was her own mother who gave her away. The house I found was close to the one Kay and I had lived in all these years, the house had four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, and a large patio, but no pool. The boys pitched in, and my new assistant was a real lifesaver. You see, after the divorce was finalized, we were all sitting around enjoying Thanksgiving dinner at Kay's mom's house when the kids blabbed. They were telling their mom and grandparents how the new house is coming along and how they each have their own bedrooms and baths. It's so great, Kenny told them. Danny has his own room, I have my own room, Dad and Aunt Laura have theirs, and we still have one left for when people come to visit us, he said, glowing. I even got to pick the color of the walls and trim, he said proudly. Kenny, say that again, please, Kay asked her son. There's your room, Danny's room, a spare room, and someone else's room, she asked. Dad and Aunt Laura's, he said as if nothing had happened. And how long has Aunt Laura been living with you? Kay asked. Since we moved into the new house, he said as he chewed his dessert. Stephen Moore, Kay shouted. Looks like someone found out our little secret, I said, kissing Laura in the kitchen. You know, it was only a matter of time. We never told the kids to keep quiet, and Mom and Dad would have found out by my tummy anyway, Laura said, rubbing her tummy. Shall we go? I said, holding out my hand. I'd love to, Laura replied as we entered the dining room. It was like the shock and awe of the Gulf War. Kay was beyond angry that I was now with her little sister. Her mom was happy to have another grandchild, and her dad was happy that he wouldn't have to get used to another son-in-law, and Laura and I were just happy. I think I originally married the wrong sister, but I fixed that before it was too late.